Hello, it's Debbie with Stitching. Today we're going to be working on the Sweet Pea Santa's Workshop Tour Block of the Week quilt. It's Block 3. I thank you for joining me for my little stitch out here. The first step is to stitch down the batting. Okay. So let's get started. Before we go on to our next step, let's trim this out. Step two, tabletop placement. I went round and round on what to use on here. Every time I would lay down a fabric, I'd think, no, I don't like that. <laughs> so I tried something a little more muted even though it has a lot of splats now we're going to do our tack down it's time for the trim Step four is the wall placement. I decided to go with something very plain for my background. So it's a mint green because I've got all these lively colors inside. Well, especially the wrapping paper. Had a little fun with that. Now we'll tack it down and then we'll trim. Before I pull this out to trim, I want to tell you that I was sitting here reading through the list. I kept thinking, wait, there should be a satin stitch in there. The tabletop edge is going to have some satin stitch. That's why I chose brown. I am so sorry about that. I was able to use the brown throughout because it's not only going to show on a satin the trim of your table or whatever that is. So whatever color you're going to use on this for the trim, for the edge, and it's just a tiny little piece, it's like right here, then you can use that for 14 steps. Now let's trim it up. Step six is just that tiny little satin spot. I guess that's how I missed it because it's so tiny. Okay. 
Now we're going to work on our borders, the frame of the block. And just like the others, we put a piece down just past the seam. <laughs> Trying to get it straight. We'll stitch it down, fold it over. I'll show you the first one. Then it'll, it'll do the top, the bottom, the left, the right. I will show you the first one, each step. And after that, I'll just be fi flying through them. For the top and the bottom, you just want to trim this down. Oh, my little thing came off. Must have caught it on something. We just want to trim this off even with our batting. You could probably go a little closer. I chose my batting as a line. Makes it easier for me to see it. And my line here. From this point forward, it'll be in high speed without me talking. All steps are the same. Step 15 is the corner details, and I'm again using gold. After our details in the corner, we're going to start the process of 
applique. There's numerous applique in this one, which is kind of fun. We have four rolls of wrapping paper. Each of them are an applique. Then there's a box that they're in. There's, let's see, down in the right corner is a box with candy and the left corner is a box with bare parts. Right now we're going to start on the wrapping paper. So this is my first wrapping paper. That's the placement. Now we'll do the tack down. trim. After the trim, it's going to do the satin stitching on the edges of your first wrapping paper. Continuing on, we're going to do the next roll of wrapping paper. The ones on the ends have the little swirl out, and then the ones in the center are just the tubes. I have a very lively piece of fabric for that center one, and I'm trying to get that center line of the rows of blocks in the center of that. I'm sure it's not going to be straight because mine looks a little too straight. We will see. Now it's going to do the tack down and then we'll do the trim. I'm curious to see after it does the satin how much of this will actually be showing. already up to step 21. I didn't tell you in the beginning there are 66 steps but like I said the, there's like 14 at the very beginning that you can use one color for and when you look you see how you can barely see that <laughs> so you know you can almost use whatever you want huh let's do the satin edge on that roll of paper
It's time for the third roll of wrapping paper. We're going to do our placement. This really glittery stuff, it almost feels like a vinyl. It's very unique. And it's funny because I did cut a piece of the purple one. And it's definitely a polyester. And that's what this was supposed to be. But it has such a coating on it. But I will tell you, don't iron it. <laughs> you melt it. This is all I could find of this. And I'm trying to stretch it as far as possible. I ordered that from AliExpress. It was called uh, Laser. Let's see. Glitter laser printed fabric, something weird like that. It had the word laser in it, so apparently the it's just a printing of that on the I don't know. I know that it makes adorable scrunchies. Not sure how much of that you could actually see. It was wanting to bounce around. And I probably should have put a tiny little piece of tape in there to hold it in place. So I had my hand up there. Time for the trim. Now we'll do the satin trim on the third roll. Now we'll do the placement stitch for the fourth roll of wrapping paper. This will be our final wrapping paper. We've done the tack down. Now it's time for the trim. Step 27 is going to be the satin edge on this final roll of wrapping paper. Now we'll do the placement stitch for the center box. That's this one holding the wrapping paper. Tack down. Yeah. 
10 Maui trim. Step 30 is the satin trim on the box. It will now stitch the label edge, it's a satin stitch, There is a detail stitch to go over top of all this satin. I'm using the same color. Now it will stitch the words wrapping paper in the label. We are now moving over to the left box and it's going to start with bare ear. Now it's going to sew the placement for the bear hat. After the placement, we will do the tack down and then the trim for the bear's head. Now we're going to stitch out the snout area where the face bulges out. The nose and the eyes come after this, so we're still sticking with the brown.
Now you'll want to change your thread to the color you're going to use for the nose and the eyes. I'm using black. Step 39 is going to be the bear's right paw. So I've gone back to my brown I'm using for the bear. Sorry, I sort of left out the fact that it was also going to do the head satin and then the right paw. All right. It's going to jump now to the right box placement, and I'm going to change my thread color. for that. At step 40, when it does the placement for your right box, the it'll do the placement, the tack down, you'll trim, then it's going to go right to your candy canes, which I'm going to use white for my candy canes. So I'm going to go ahead and put that white in now. When you're going to stitch out your block, sit down with your threads, you, the threads you've chosen for the fabrics you've chosen and list it out so you can see where you can cut steps and what colors you can use in a row. It really does help. Let's trim this box. Now that we have that trimmed out, we're going to work on our candy canes. The white of the candy canes. Which, of course, you can use whatever color you want. I'm using white. Our next two steps will be the stripes on the candy canes. It'll do the right one and then it'll do separately the left one so that you can change colors if you prefer. I did consider it, but I've decided I want the red. Just, I don't have any red in mind at this point. It'll only be what's in the candy. So first, the stripes on the right.
If you want a different color stripe on the candy cane for the left, this is when you'll change that color. I'm going to continue with red. Step 45 is the left candy, the frill, where the wrapper is twisted and it frills out at the top and then the stripes on the wrapper. I'm going to go with green. I'm just trying to pull in some of those traditional Christmas colors. At this point, you're going to want to change your color to the second color you're using on that wrapper. I'm going with a light gray. I'm actually thinking of particular candy and its wrapper, though it was reversed. The frill end would be the, you know, the silver. I wanted more green on it, so I'm doing it this way. So now I'm going with the light gray. Now you'll want to change to the color you're going to use for the detail on this candy wrapper. I'm using black. Put your color in for the next candy frill. I'm using light gray again. Our next step is the second color of this candy. It's the body of the candy. This one does not have stripes. You'll want to put in the color you're going to use for the body of that third candy in that box. I'm using orange. Now there's a round candy, looks like a peppermint, it has the swirls in it, in the box. So I'm, I still wanted to use the red and white, but I'm reversing them so that hopefully it'll be more red than white. Step 51 will be the other stripe in this hard candy. You'll change your color now for that. I'm using white. Now we'll do the placement 
for the left box. Tack down for the left box and then we trim. You'll see that that puckered. I used a very small piece. I didn't use anything to hold it into place and it did give me a pucker. Now you'll want to make sure you have the collar in for the satin edge of your candy box. It is the label on the candy box, the box on the right. It will stitch out that satin edge. After it does the satin edge for the label, it's going to do a detail on that satin stitch. I'm sticking with the same color. Now we're going to do the word candy on the label. I went back to yellow. There is a ribbon that lies between the boxes. I'm going to use, a, I'm, oh, my brain went blank. It's a purplish pink color, but you'll want to put in the color that you're going to use for the ribbon.
The next step is to stitch out this small ivy, well it looks like a holly streamer. The, the leaves are just an outline. I went back to green for this. We are now at step 60 and that is going to be the left box's satin trim. So now you'll put in the color you're going to use on your left box with the bears in it. You'll need to thread the color you're going to use for the outside edge of the label in the box. If you're wanting a different color for the detail on this satin that we just stitched out, you'll change your color now. I'm using the same color. Thread up the color that you're going to use for the words bare parts in this last box. Now you'll want to put in the color that your bear you were using on your bear to do its final paw hanging out of the box. There are two hard candies down here on your border trim. They are the swirl hard candies. I don't want to do another white and red, so I'm going to do a lighter green with white. It will do all of the color, all of the first color for both, and then all of the second color for both.
our very last step, step 66, are the detail swirls on these two small hard candies. Here is my finished block. Now, you'll, this, yours won't come out like this. I had my thread jam up and I didn't stop and pick out all the threads. I just went ahead and stitched over it again. I'm okay with that little boo-boo. But yours, yours will be like this are right here. I like it. It's pretty. I think maybe a brighter color through here it just doesn't I thought that color would pop a little and it's just I don't know I tried to use a metallic here and ended up cutting that part all out because it literally jammed up in my machine and never stitched in <laughs> I thought boy this thread feels heavy yeah it's really heavy it's like it's got to be like a 20 <laughs> weight the lower the number the thicker the thread. It goes the opposite of what you're expecting. And it's really thick and that would explain why I've never used it. I found it in my drawer and I thought, ooh, I'm going to use it on here. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> but I do like it. It did turn out really adorable. The little bear, I lucked out with that color. It works great with that thread. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. And the next one is already out as we speak. And it is a little elf with a reindeer. She is adorable. So please join me for that stitch along. Bye-bye.